Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see how we can do logging in Databricks. Now this particular logging is not just specific to Databricks. You can also implement the same logging even in your normal Python scripts as well. So let's move ahead and see exactly what is logging and how we can implement it. But before moving on, I do recommend all of you to subscribe to my channel and also connect with me on LinkedIn and I will leave the link for LinkedIn in the description box as well. So when we talk about logging, right, in this case, we are going to use a Python built-in module logging, which will help us to write the status messages to a particular file or any output stream. So when I say that logging, why do we do logging, right? So when you have written a piece of a code, any code, right, it can be doing anything. It can be doing some kind of a transformation or any XYZ thing. Now, if it fails, we want to track, okay, at what point it has failed, right? Or if there is any issue with whatever you have written. Now, we want to track what has actually happened. We want to, you know, let's say simply do the count of how many uh, rows were loaded in, into the table or at what step it has failed, why it has failed, you know, and we want to route it to a one particular location so that we can also analyze what were the, you know, reasons due to which your code has been failing, let's say, for example, things like that. So in that case, you definitely need logging in day to day in the projects and we implement it as well. So in this case, we are going to use a built-in module in Python, which is called logging. And that is one of the reasons that you can also implement it in your Python scripts, not just in your Spark code. So when you talk about this built-in module logging, right, in this module, you have you know, multiple features. We are going to use most common features which are used in the logging to do, you know, a normal logging in any of the projects. So we are going to use log 4J logging framework to create the custom log messages and write it to a particular file. Now, how we can actually do this? So the very first thing that you need to do is you need to import the module from the library, right? So first of all, you need to import logging, right, to use it. And after that, you need to configure the logger. So we are going to configure the logger. We are going to provide the configurations to that particular module that we have imported. Now, there are n number of parameters and configurations you can provide. Again, here we are going to see what are the main ones that we implement in day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, projects. So, those are the configurations that we are going to see. Now, in that configuration, you can mention things like what will be the output location of your file, what will be the format of your output location, you know, in which format will it be written because if a code is running let's say 10 times a day right so you might want to write it with some particular name and some date format so that is nothing but the formatting and then the other thing that you might want to set is the logging information level that logging you can do at multiple levels right so now what threshold you want for the tracking so do you want only the error messages in the output or you want the warning messages also in the output or you want all the custom, uh, you know, statements that you have written that in the output. So what exactly you need in the output? So these are the configurations that you define. So let's move ahead and see exactly how we can implement this logging. So guys, here I am uh, in the data brick. So you can actually see that from the discussion that I had just now, right? I told you that there are different levels, right? In which you would want to do logging. So debug info, warning, critical, and error. So error, for example, will only tell you whenever there is an error, it is going to write that particular error into the log file if you define it as, as an error. Similarly, if you want to, you know, make sure that you indicate any critical information, any serious information or any serious error, right? Due to which program might not be able to continue. In that case, you will use critical. Similarly, information. If you want to track any information, you will use information. So these are the different levels. Now, we'll see that anyway. So let's start how exactly it is supposed to be done. So the very first thing that you need to do is you need to import logging. So if you're seeing the command 2, I'm doing nothing. I'm simply importing the module that I want to use, which is logging. I'm also importing date, time and time because I'm using it. Now, uh, this is just for your information, right? Uh, these are the different levels in which you will do the logging. You want to use debug, right? You want to use info. You want to use critical, error or fatal. So these are the few ones which we actually use, uh, you know, normally, which indicates what is the problem that actually happened, right? So the, the level of information that you want to track in the output file, that is what it defines. 
Now similarly, once you have uh, imported the login, right? You need to set the logger. So you basically provide in the various uh, parameters to the logger. So if you see from the login that we have imported at the top, we are using get logger function. We are using this get logger and we are providing log4j. So we are using log4j framework to log our custom messages, right? Now, from first of all, we imported logging. After that, we are saying logging.getLogger. Get me the logger. Get me that particular function and use log4j framework for my logging. And set the level of my logging to the debug because I want to debug it in case, uh, you know, de debug will be a little more detailed information, right? In case of, in case you are putting it as set level as debug. So these are the two parameters that you have provided or the two set of informations that you have provided. After that, you are using logging.formatter. So everything you can see over here, logging.getLogger, logging.formatter. So using formatter, you are actually formatting how your output file name will look like, right? So that is the just the formatting part. You can put any format you want to. Now, similarly, after this is done, you will again say logging.filehandler. So this means using the file handler, you are trying to point to the location where your error file will reside. So here I'm saying dbfs test and the mode is right. If the mode is right, it is going to overwrite it. If it is A, it is going to append it. Now, similarly, set formatter, right? Uh, then here I'm also saying that for this particular file handler dot set formatter, use this particular format, right? As the output name. Now, similarly, whatever logger I have defined at the top, right? Logger dot get logger log4j using log4j framework and using the debug method. So I'm saying that add my log file handler, add my these file related information to that particular logger. So this is how we have defined it. So now this is just three lines of code basically that are majorly written. After that, let's say you have a particular file lying in a particular location. So if you see over here in command 10, I have a file where I have ID, first name and the last name and I'm going to do some kind of operations on this file and I'm also going to see how my error handling looks like over here, uh, logging looks like over here. So if you see in command 9, so the very first thing I'm doing is logger.info, right? Using logger.info, I'm saying that put this particular message in the logger file, right? So message is share data source file lead started. So basically in this particular location, whatever my file was at uh, you know it has started reading that particular file so i'm providing that information and then i'm reading this file you know using spark.read.csv and then i'm doing a count operation and i'm printing the count as well and then i'm providing the message that a total number of records present are this much you know i'm providing the count over here and then again i'm saying logger.info so basically this is the information message this is not an error this is an information message that i want to keep in my logger now Further, I want to create a new column with column. I want to name it as test column. And then I'm referring to a column inside my data frame DF, which is created using this particular file. And I'm using a column which is actually not present in my particular data frame. So eventually what will happen is this is going to give me error because I'm trying to refer a column which is not present. So in this case, if you see this try and accept. Now this accept will accept the exception, right? So there will be an error exception that will be raised because this is an error now the moment an exception is raised or the moment this try block is not executed due to the error exception will be raised and there will be an error message you know that error message we are already capturing using try and accept and then logger dot error we are logging the error information so this is how we basically you know in our code we implement the logging part and when we do that you know, after all of this logging is done, my code is done, and I don't want to proceed with any further logging, I will simply do logging.shutdown. I will call this particular function logging.shutdown. And now, this is the location where I have written my log, right? So if you see, I'm saying spark.read.txt. So this is this is the file where I have, you know, uh, directed my logger to write. If you see at the top over here, this is what we have done, right? I have said over here that logging dot file handle line write it to this particular location dbfs test right so now if I'm reading the same location you can actually see what does it say it says you know that this particular you know file we have started reading this is the total number of records and this is the error so you can see info 
as well as error both of these two are coming in over here now why this is happening because at the top i have mentioned my logging level as debug so if you see here i have set the logging level as debug now similarly just because i have mentioned it as debug so what it will have what will happen is it will make sure that it inserts each and every level of logging that i have mentioned now similarly if i make it as error over here now let me let me re execute these lines right let me first of all do import logging after that you know let me try to execute my command 5 my command 6 my command 7 okay and this display is not needed and then i rerun this okay if you see now again i'm rerunning it it will give me again the error because that particular column is not present in the data frame so the exception will be raised and then let me do the logging dot shutdown as well now once these two things are done right you will see i will again reread this file now i have already marked that file as write okay so it is going to overwrite not append now if you see it says only error right there is no info present why there is no info present because at the top i have mentioned that that i want to set my logging level as error right so this is how you basically set you know you import the logging you get the logger use the log 4j framework set the level of logging define where my output log logging file will be present will it be mode write or append if you want to give any you know kind of format to the file name in that case you can use this formatter and after that it is just 